The Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, was overrun by the Japanese Empire the end of 1941, early 1942, and it remained occupied for the rest of the war. What happened in the Dutch colony of Suriname during the Second World War? I'm here in Paramaribo in front of a World War II monument and in this video I'm going to tell you about Suriname during World War II. When World War II broke out, Suriname was in the hands of the Dutch for centuries. On May 10th, 1940, Germany invaded the motherland, the Netherlands. The Dutch governor in Suriname, his name was Johannes Kielstra, he proclaimed martial law and he ordered the arrest of German citizens within the colony. A number of 73 Germans as well as um, political opponents were arrested. Thereafter, nine more German men, 45 women and 35 children were incarcerated, regardless whether these supported the Nazis or not. German men over the age of 15 were detained in Fort Zeelandia, while women and children were sent to the old sugar plantation Marienberg. A malaria plague was soon discovered, so therefore the women and the children were reunited with the men. Unlike the men, the women and the children were allowed to walk freely. They caused actually not much problems and as time progressed, they received less restrictions. They were allowed to receive money, books and organize their free time. A few restrictions reappeared when the governor was told that books on weapons and warfare were smuggled to the men. The German crew of the vessel Goslar that was in the harbor of Paramaribo sunk its ship. Suriname boarded French Guyana that came in the hands of the pro-Nazi Vichy regime. By the inhabitants of the colony, both Surinamese and Dutch, there was an active support for the Allied war effort and a lively interest in the situation in the Netherlands. Money was raised to support the Red Cross, buy war material and send relief packages. In January 1942, the country faced a new problem. A ship with 146 possible NSB members, Dutch members of the Dutch Nazi party that came from the Dutch East Indies, arrived at the port of Paramaribo. Governor Kielstra did not know what to do with this group and tried to seek advice from the Minister of Overseas Territories. Gielstra would receive documents with proof whether these men were actually a member of the Dutch Nazi party, but the documents were never received by Gielstra. The governor now had to make a decision and make a choice whether he would let these men go or not. He chose not to take the risk and not let these men go and set up a camp for them as well. Local civil defense groups were organized in 1942 called for men of all ethnicities to work together to protect the country from potential attack and civil unrest, and to help with rationing and the distribution of food and fuel. At its peak, the so-called Schutterij, some kind of home guard, numbered 5,000 men. Initially, most Javanese and Hindustani recruits were not accepted because they did not speak Dutch. In 1943, this requirement was dropped. In addition, religion and diet were also taken into account. About 1,400 Javanese and Hindustanis served in the Schutterij. The government initially objected to this conclusion, but for the Asian migrants and their descendants, the defense organizations were an important vehicle for social emancipation. See, Suriname by now was a melting pot of different cultures. There were the Creoles, those with African roots, as well as Javanese and Hindustanis that came to Suriname as contract laborers after slavery was abolished. Also, females could join a female home guard. This unit had around 300 women. Most of the recruits were part of the Creole middle class between the ages of 18 and 22 years. And they also included Surinamese Jews. For Jews whose lives became unbearable during the Second World War, some of them came to Suriname. There already existed a Jewish community within the colony. More came later as Hitler ended the so-called independence of Vichy France at the end of 1942. And in Suriname they were well received. While some served in the Schutterij, others served in the bauxite industry. Because the bauxite mines were vital for the American aircraft industry. It is estimated that 82% of the bauxite that was used 
for the building of American aircraft came from Suriname. And this was actually before the US officially chose sides the end of 1941. The Dutch government signed an agreement with the US. The US could station 2,000 troops in Suriname to protect the American interests. The harbor of the capital Paramaribo became a base for the US Navy to combat German U-boats that targeted Allied ships in the Caribbean. The Surinamese airport Zanderij grew in size and was modernized. It functioned as a staging area for US planes that flew to North Africa. 48 planes crashed in Suriname during the Second World War. The industrial and military activities created more jobs for the local population. The war affected the whole society. Thousands came to Paramaribo as a result of the draft or in search of work in, for example, the construction of defense works. Others found employment in the bauxite industry or the service sector. The work was more attractive than agricultural while often little education or experience was needed to obtain a relatively well-paid job. The war also brought negative aspects, blackouts, inflation, food rationing, but in the end, World War II brought many positive changes for Suriname. As one remembered, World War II, well, we have celebrated. The Americans were here, there were parties, we lacked nothing. Suriname as a whole behaved loyal, towards the Dutch government in exile. Dutch administration decreased and coupled to economic growth, nationalist feelings among the educated population grew. People from this class were closely related to the Dutch cultural identity. They strived for more autonomy after the war. This was fueled by the authoritarianism of governor Kielstra. He used his authority, increased to martial law, to eliminate political opponents. The Creoles accused him of wanting to make Suriname an Asian colony based on the Dutch East Indies. Surinamese politician Wim Bos Verschuur petitioned to replace him. Kielstra had him arrested but was soon relocated to Mexico to work as an ambassador there. Kielstra was succeeded by Johannes Cornelis Brons. Kielstra was also blamed for creating the lack of willingness of Surinamese troops to fight in the Netherlands East Indies. Colonial Minister Van Moek in London explained that that it doesn't make sense to fight dictatorship abroad when one experiences dictatorship within one's own borders. But even after Kielsel was gone, enthusiasm to join the forces remained small. Racism was another obstacle. I read 15 Surinamese participated in Operation Overlord. Around 200 Surinamese joined the Navy and 450 to 500 volunteered to fight in the Dutch East Indies against Japan, where they fought alongside Australian troops on Borneo. And I did want to mention Anton de Kom, an anti-colonial writer who was exiled to the Netherlands before the war, joined the Dutch resistance during the war, was arrested and perished in a German concentration camp. Although the war, in addition to prosperity, also brought suffering, Suriname has made considerable progress after World War II. Many young men and women went to assist the Netherlands and left everything behind. And they realized that things could go different. The circumstances of the war ultimately ensured that Surinamese became increasingly detached from the colonial motherland. Now how Suriname became independent is what I will discuss in a future episode. If you want to learn about other countries during World War II, click here. Thank you for watching. See you later.